I'm Sithrith. I'm Draculetta. I'm Mithelros. And you're listening to Radio Free Tyria, the Guild Wars 2 podcast for the casual crowd. Heart of Thorns is finally live. It's been alive for a little under 48 hours now, um, which is just super exciting, and we've been playing it a bit. Drax not here, unfortunately, today, but I think that we there's enough to talk about that I don't think um, this is going to be a short show, because with Heart of Thorns, we've got six maps. We've got Masteries, we've got at least Specializations, we've got The Revenant, which we failed to mention last week in our big Here's What to Expect from Heart of Thorns uh, episode, because we're good at that. We we forgot entirely to mention the new class that came out, or was going to come out, and now it's here, and it's great. So uh, I guess I guess we'll start with the obvious thing, which is the maps that we now have access to in the Maguma Jungle. Uh, Thalros and I have been kind of stumbling our way around Verdant Brink the past few days. That's way of putting it. Yeah, stumbling. stumbling, falling, occasionally gliding. Um, mostly just being like, "Look at that over there! What's that? Oh, okay, let's go over there. Oh, that's a thing." If it doesn't kill us, and we don't fall down it. It's fine. Yep, pretty much. Um, it's it's a very pretty map, and it's really uh, great for exploration. I think. Um, yeah. One really cool moment was when we accidentally discovered one of the guild halls. <laughs> uh, yeah, just sort of glided off to a place because it was like near the bottom of a cliff, and there's like an opening there, and we just sort of glided down it, and there it is. Yep. Turns out it's an easy way to get to it. We didn't know that. Right, right. Yeah, so that was a nice little surprise. Like we're like, what the heck is this? And we it's like, oh, look at this cool little entrance. We walk in, and there's like a guild initiative person in there, and we're like, oh shit, this is mm. this is a guild hall. Awesome. Also spend a little time on the top canopy. Yeah. We managed to get up to the canopy for a little bit, look around at all the smoke and clouds. Mostly it's just smoke and clouds up there. But uh, it was cool. Uh, we did manage to get down to the map to the south of Verdant Brink for a second. And then we, we went back to continue stumbling around Verdant Brink. Um, it's really cool. It's kind of frustrating sometimes because it's like, oh, look at all these things that I need masteries to use, like the mushrooms and the updrafts and stuff. But um, you can still get around, not not easily, I would say, but you can definitely still get around with just your feet. You learn the ways to go. Like, yeah. At certain points, I've died quite a few times, but you pick up which routes are fastest mm -hmm. pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. And then, yeah, once you unlock that first tier of gliding, it's so good. Love gliding. I'm really excited to level yeah. up more. You pretty much don't have to jump off anything and risk dying again, since you can stop, start it, and you won't die from full damage. Mm -hmm. And I assume it'll get even better as we level it up, because you'll be able to glide for longer periods of time before your bar runs out. Yeah. So that's cool. So what else? That's um. We did have some some funny things that we came across in Verdant Brink. Oh, I, I guess I will just say... um. We're not going to talk about story spoilers too much. We'll talk about some funny things that we found, but um, it's not they're not like story spoilers. Like We haven't gotten that far in the story to yeah, really spoil anything. The only spoiler we can come up with is what's in front of us right now. Yeah, basically. like If you're looking at the Twitch stream and you hadn't seen that before, that's like the extent of the spoilers that we're going to tell you, basically. We have not gotten very far in the story at all. Um, one funny thing that we thought of, though, was... There's, you you know, you talk to these frog people that it sell, which we knew about before, so that's, you know, again, it's not a spoiler. But there's the one, like, the chieftain frog, who apparently is the mother of the first frog that you meet, and in one of the dialogue bits, he calls her mom. Just, just mom, not even, like, mother or anything, mom, which we thought was... My mom. It's like, oh, my mom says this. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And so that was kind of funny. Uh, Atharos had quite a shock as we were exploring Verdant Brink and came across a certain group of people. Yeah, yeah, that's... I'm going to remember that for good old film. Are you going to spoil it for other people, or are you going to keep that to yourself? 
it's probably something worth experiencing first. Okay. There's a... To say it involves a loincloth. Yeah, there's a loincloth. If you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. Um, if you don't, God help your soul. You'll come across it eventually, and you'll also be like, what is happening? Uh, let's see, what else? Um, another thing that we came across, you know, obviously one of the big things for Heart of Thorns is they introduced this new so- sort of event called Adventures, which are like little mini competitive sort of event things. So we did a couple adventures, and they were pretty good, actually. Um, some harder than others, because some of them you basically need to have leveled up masteries in order to do well at them. Like, there's this bug-catching one that we just did, we couldn't do, because we didn't have... Uh, we couldn't use updrafts, and we couldn't jump on mushrooms. But the one we did do where with the that they talked about before Heart of Thorns released, where you have a flamethrower, and you're trying to, like, kill as many vines as possible, that one was pretty good. Um, I think I got a silver reward level. So, yeah, you can keep trying those and, like, redoing them to get higher tier, um, like, yeah. completion rates or whatever. Little arcade mini minigames. Yeah. It was another one which was involved gliding around trying to collect bugs. That one was tricky because it seems like some of them you need more of the mastery unlocks to really do well. Mm. Maybe we could have completed that without it, but I couldn't collect suck. But... Yeah, some of them, it seems like they get easier to do the more mastery points you have. Except for, like, that vine one. I don't think having more masteries would have really helped. Just yeah, knowing where like the vines are. Areas. Oh, yeah, we did find one bit of it where, like, if you had jumped up with the bouncing mushrooms, you would have had more vines to kill yeah, It seems quickly. like they optimize it, probably get the highest ranking you need it, but I managed to get almost silver from, you know, just starting out. So, yeah, it's not too uh, restrictive like that. So, yeah, adventures are cool. We haven't come across too many of them. But the ones we did see were pretty cool. Um, Some of the uh, enemies are pretty... um, I mean, obviously you have the usual Mordrim stuff, so there's pterogryphs like down there, there's the Menders, wolves and all that. There's also weird dinosaur, stegosaurus things. There's some pretty weird dinosaurs in this jungle. They are very strange. Um, There was... I don't remember what the name... I think it was like Arrowhead or something? Yeah. And like its whole lower jaw was like this big arrow-shaped wedge. And it would just, like, roll over you. Like, it would just, like, lay down and roll on top oh, of you. Oh, yeah, his, his main attack was rolling. Yeah, so that was kind of weird. There's also... Uh, there's pocket raptors. There's pocket there's raptors. Fun. There's... The shrooms. The shrooms. All sorts Those of stuff. Those guys were not fun. But, yeah, that was probably maybe the first time I died in this, aside like falling was being killed by the Mushroom Kings, so... Not fun times. Not fun times, no. But yeah, the mushroom king, the mushrooms are kind of weird because it's like these little mushroom guys, like it's like a, a mushroom head but with feet, and they just look really weird, and they run at you and explode. Oh, yeah, and finally, probably the smoke scale. Oh ninjas. gosh, those are so weird. They, they are There's no other way to put it. Yeah, they they dart in and then they pew, 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 like they dart around. It's like the number three revenant skill or thieves or something. It's crazy. They are very, very scary. But yeah, this is definitely a step up in difficulty from the other zones I've done. I would put it is maybe um, Southson Cove, I think, was abnormally high difficulty compared to other zones. Maybe parts of the Silver Waste, but honestly, even Silver Waste is more of a breeze to actually just go around and adventure in than this. Or, yeah, this is like probably the hardest zone to actually just do normal things in outside of proper like group content. Just like normal adventuring is quite difficult sometimes, especially if you're going to way to go and then running into a group of moms. Yeah, so uh, I think that's about everything that we've done in Verdant Brink. Like I said, we haven't gotten too far. We've kind of been taking our time. Uh, and we did do a bit of the Halloween stuff because that released as well with Heart of Thorns. Uh, Lion's Arch looks, you know, suitably spooky. I was actually really, really impressed. I logged into the PvP lobby and they had decked out the PvP lobby with pumpkins and creepy, like, trees and stuff and all sorts of, like, green particle effects all over Halloween stuff like that. So PvP lobby is pretty cool. Definitely go check that out if you don't usually PvP. It's really cool looking. But mm-hmm. uh, Thoros, the, uh, yeah, event. you weren't too impressed by the jumping puzzle, well, as you expected. yeah. I heard a lot about the clock tower, about how like punishing difficult it was. Um, I guess I kind of got the wrong. I somehow made up the wrong impression about it. I thought it would be a more of a 
like a longer traditional exercise. jumping puzzle. Yeah, like just one that's really long. But it's not. You have to just duck over and over again trying to figure out the way to go. And if you even slip up once for like a second, you're dead. Right. So, yeah, not my favorite kind. I prefer ones that you just take your time and have patience making you to jump. Especially with how long the, you waste either waiting around in the lobby area or watching the cutscene for 500 times. Yeah. It's it's a bit tedious, gonna be honest. The rest of it was kind of just meh, so. Yeah. Like, we kind of moved on to uh, the Moguma stuff pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, the Labyrinth is also kind of... That's another one D you weren't super into. Mm, just killing stuff. Yeah. In a circle, so basically. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why I don't mind it. I don't mind that kind of silver waste repetitive, just go around killing stuff kind of thing. But uh, you're not into it as much. Yeah. Especially since I was looking to do more you know, engaging things. Right, yeah. But yeah, it's, I mean, I, I'll probably go back and do some more attempts at the clock tower just as a little break from Heart of Thorns. But, I mean, there's certainly enough to do for Heart of Thorns. I, I don't think it's possible to just burn through this content quickly. And that kind of, I guess, brings us to one thing that people have been complaining about on Reddit and the forums and stuff with Heart of Thorns is, um, well, it's kind of two things combined, elite specializations and mastery points or, you know, mastery experience. So to level up masteries, basically you get points and... Uh, you get mastery points by doing achievements or certain story steps, stuff like that. And then to unlock new tiers of the mastery, you have to fill up your experience bar. And then you use the points that you've gotten to finish off that line and unlock the next line to then do your experience points. You know, rinse, repeat. So it takes a long time to fill up that experience bar, it turns out. Um, which, you know, some people are not super pleased about. Um, some people are saying it takes a really long time to do masteries. Basically, what you want to do is, besides just killing mobs and completing the story stuff, make sure you're doing events and adventures and stuff, because those give you XP. But also make sure that you're even just gathering, um, like, plants and ore and wood and stuff, like, for crafting, because that gives you XP as well. So that's kind of something that people haven't been pleased with how long it's taking to do masteries, but I kind of realized that... You know, usually when MMOs have expansion packs, they release a new level cap. And rather than giving us a level cap, this is what we are working towards, is unlocking these things. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe part of the problem is there's no hearts. Like, there weren't hearts in or or any of the instances, but they're not having them in or I think it isn't as much a problem because you're almost always level 80 before you go there anyway. Whereas here, you, you're going to be level 80, so you have to go through all these. And there's, uh, let's see... About 20-ish, maybe a bit over. Um, yeah. Each one to one lock. So that's like 20 levels worth. Assuming I hit, I get all those done by the time I'm roughly done with the content, I think it's fine. But uh, if it doesn't, like if you finish the content now, well, most of the content, and you're just sort of waiting around for unlocks, that's maybe not matching the curve up well enough. Right. Also, there's a secondary thing of you yeah, expected to have something at a point where you're not even close. Like, there's a certain point we got in the personal story where you're, like, the person, NPC talks about, like, using certain things, like these bouncing mushrooms or the uh, other stuff. Mm -hmm. We're not even close to having those yet. Like, we only unlocked the basic one at the beginning. I don't know whether you're supposed to have it by that point or whether he's just saying it to remind you to actually learn it. Right. But that kind of stuff. We managed to get around it, though. But, yeah. We haven't actually got to a point where we need them yet. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing. Except for that one bit of the story that's like, unlock your first glider. Um, mastery yeah. point or whatever because then that's like well you, you have to do that whatever yeah that didn't take so long though so yeah. yeah we'll have to wait and see in exactly how close it is to matching the curve but yeah yeah the other thing people have been upset about is uh, the rate of unlocking fully the elite specializations so the way it works is if you have done every hero challenge uh, in central Tyria, like the, the core of the game that was out before Heart of Thorns released, um, you would have enough to unlock about half of your elite specialization um, wheel on the, the trait wheel thing. So then you would have to go into the Maguma jungle and unlock more, obviously. 
Luckily, hero challenges in Maguma Jungle give you 10 hero points instead of just one like the rest of Tyria does. But even still, um, it takes a long time to do those things. So a lot of people are upset that you can't just start using your elite specialization to the fullest right away. Um, I can kind of understand that because it is disappointing to not be able to use those elite specs to their fullest right away. I know a lot of people were looking forward to using the elite specs to, you know, do the content in the jungle. So it kind of is disappointing not, like, you have to work your way towards it. But, again, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, instead of getting level caps, this is the new kind of quote-unquote level cap that we're getting that we have to work towards. So I'm not, I'm not pleased by it, but I'm not as upset about it as a lot of other people are, I think. Yeah, I don't mind, because, like I said, like you said, um, you get a pretty fair chunk of the things. And the main one, anyway, is getting the other item, mm-hmm. the weapon, or, you know, whatever, like shields for chromatids, etc. Yeah. That's, like, I would think the main part of it. Yeah. The rest is, like, obviously an important part, but it's not as, I guess, iconic as the rest of it, so. Yeah, I... I... Just grab a shield and stop using it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it takes 60 points to unlock the first level of the Elite Specialization, and that will give you the new weapon. So, yeah, I've already done that for Chronomancer. I've gotten, I think I've, I'm, I'm on to one minor trait so far. And so I've been using the shield. But even still then, like, I, I don't have any pro, I haven't had too many problems in Magumo Jungle. It's been fine. I mean, everything is tougher, certainly, in the jungle than in other zones, but, Still still doing a lot of damage and stuff, and Chronomancer skills are fun. I don't have my utility skills yet, which is unfortunate, but, you know, as I go along, do more hero challenges in the jungle, I'll get there. So I'm not too upset about it. But yeah, so besides that, also have been playing a little bit of Revenant. I made The first thing I did when Heart of Thorns went live was I made a Revenant, because I was like, I don't know, I don't want to do jungle by myself, and Halloween stuff, whatever, so I just made a Revenant right away. Also because I already had my, my whole color scheme and I knew exactly what I was going to do and I already had a total makeover kit ready for him and so I did that <laughs> because, you know, I love character creation stuff. So I got my, my Revenant. He looks so cool. I love him. Uh, the best, I used a level 20, 20 uh, level up tome because I had like three of those auto level to 20 tomes and like the only time you can use them is for characters under level 20. So I was like, well, I guess I should use these because otherwise they're just going to sit in my vault. So he's level 21 now, um, haven't really done a whole lot of PvE leveling with him yet, but Thoros and I did do a lot of PvP, and oh man, we found the best combination ever, I think. Uh, so I'm on my Revenant with Shiro and Glint as legends, and I'm, I'm all traded up for damage, and I'm wielding a sword and a shield and a staff. And I don't, what's, what's your build on your Guardian? Uh, I was using like the typical bunker guardian build, so I have a staff and then a mace and shield to use a shield uh, uh, mace and focus. But since they buff to the number five skill on shields, where you can now move around with it, sort of blocking things uh, around you, but yeah, I'm using that now, and I'm like full support utility healing, so I have no damage whatsoever. And it works amazing because there's a new set of sigils and runes and. S- amulets as well in pvp and what's the one that you're using that just makes this whole thing amazing the minstrel one Uh, it was the minstrel's amulet yeah that was one of the things and so So, there's these two new stats uh one is uh expertise which increases the duration of your conditions and the other one is concentration which increases the duration of your boons so the minstrel's amulet has concentration like, stat on it, like 560 or something. So, Thoros on his Guardian putting out boons all the time and then making them last longer with the concentration thing. Um, plus me as a Herald, meaning I also am putting out a ton of boons. Like, we just kill everything. We did two or three Stronghold matches, I think, and we're going to have to do some yeah, more later. Yeah. And I never went below half health. And I was just doing so much damage because I was already traded pretty heavily for damage, Um, and on top of that, getting all the boons, like 12 stacks of might and stuff like that. It was ridiculous. You said you had a sort of trait that let you do more damage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of the uh, Grandmaster traits. I don't remember which line it's on. I want to say Invocation, but I'm not entirely sure. For Revenant, gives uh, plus 2% damage for every boon that's on you. So 
<laughs> when you get all those boons on you, it really adds up. So yeah, the thing you mentioned about concentration, that's on the Minstrel's Amulet. Mm-hmm. And it gives about a good, like, uh, 40-ish percent duration, which is, like, huge. Because I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I can't, that really affects, like, the major buff you can give, like, stability, quickness. So right now my elite skill gives 8 seconds, and then Sandy Ground gives 8 seconds of stability. It's, like, huge amount of buffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, boons for that. It's really strong. And also gives a nice balance of defensive stats, too, so... Yeah, I definitely like that one. I've been waiting for a good sort of balance of vitality, healing, and toughness um, item, because I don't think there was one for these things before. Having the extra concentration, too, just is more on top. There was also a new sigil that you put out called uh, Superior Sigil of Transference, which increases outgo- outgoing healing by 10%, which is a pretty hefty amount. Yeah, that's that's so quite sizable. The boons, yeah. I can you know, just drop my AoE healing with Receive the Light and... Yeah, you pretty much don't lose health. If you do, it goes back up really damn fast. So, really good. I'm maybe a lot more happy about the build I have now. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, and a funny thing that you pointed out yesterday while we were playing is that the Guardian Revenant combo that we're playing is really similar to the champions that we usually play in League of Legends together. Like, you on, like, tanky support and me on just kill everyone forever type of characters. Yeah, yeah it, it just... It seems to work well. I, I think the yeah, thing with the getting more damage from boons, just no matter how many you have, it's like makes it especially good. Because that's like upwards of... I can put about 9 or 10 buffs on you at once. Mm-hmm. On top of the ones you can probably you know, give yourself. Right. So that's a good, like, at least 15% extra damage on top of the 12 might. It's just really strong. And I think you said before, you like you have a sort of somewhat tankyish build. Right. That yeah. Is, that just means you don't die ever. Like, I think at one point we were fighting a... I think it was a thief? Yes. Normally thieves blow people up, no matter what. Yeah. We've even been... Like, even with two people, we've struggled. We've been 1v2'd on thieves before, quite handily. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you didn't lose health no. at any point. We, we also, also took down it. bases in yeah. lightning speed. It was amazing. Right. At one point, you killed two veteran guards, which normally take at least a few seconds each to kill. I think you killed them both in less than ten. Yeah. On your own, pretty much, because I do no damage. So, yeah. Yeah. Very happy with that kind of build. I'm going to have to maybe try messing around with some of them on my Necro and more on the guard just to see what I can do. Yeah. Definitely happy with the new stuff they've added, because I didn't even know about it until now. Yeah. Yeah. That worked out really great. So, that's kind of all the big stuff that we've done in Heart of Thorns. I uh, haven't stepped into the new World v. World Borderlands. Haven't really gone outside of Verdant Brink or, like we said, got very far in the story. Um, but another, I just want to talk about some, like, little things that I noticed in the, uh, update that I think are worth mentioning. They added some new, uh, icons for elementalists and engineers because they said, because, um, I know I've said it, I can't count how many times I've said it in PvP, but, like, uh, when you're in PvP, it's really hard to tell the difference between an engineer icon and an elementalist icon. So sometimes I'll look quickly at somebody and think they're an elementalist or an engineer by just clicking on their name and seeing the little icon. So that's kind of frustrating, but they have updated the icons for elementalist and engineer to make them more distinct. So that's something to look at. Another thing they obviously, you probably noticed if you've logged into the game, they updated the character select screen. It's all kind of black and white. The music's different. Uh, you can see, when you look at your characters, you can see little mini icons next to your character's class icon. You can see their crafting icons as well. So that's a thing. There's They also added this little, like, jumping pad shortcut thing in the uh, in Lion's Arch going from the bank to the trading posts. You know, I guess people complained that it was too far away. So if you've ever been to Tequaddle, you'll know that there's those purple jumping pads that you can use to get to the different areas. So there's one near one of the tentacles of the bank octopus. You can jump on it and like you go around jumping on these other little pads and you get to the training post a lot faster. So that's pretty cool. Uh, What other things? Um, Oh, the action camera. Last week we talked about the action camera a little bit and we were like, "Eh, I don't know about this, but we tried it out and we were actually really surprised by it. Um, I'm not still sold on using it for combat, but it's actually really great for using it to explore. Yeah, like, 
it, I guess, like people mentioned about being sort of Skyrim, I can kind of see it. It, it does feel a bit like that. In the, yeah, like I think they mentioned is like, there's a white dot on the middle of your screen, and you just, it, your character moves whatever, whichever way you use WSAD. The mouse, instead of you like right clicking and moving your mouse to turn around, or to look around, you just move it, and it looks around. Which is a lot easier than having to click. I, I like, I mean, again, we haven't really done heavy combat with this on, but just casual, like, every other mob sometimes. Just exploring. I've never had to click at all, really. On top of the, like, couple of new, um, UI options, or, like, just general options, like, um, having AOE abilities, or, like, ground targeted abilities, the auto cast on whatever you've got targeted, is a huge benefit for me, because I really hated how they changed it with Necros, where you automatically get the trait to have all well abilities be ground targeted, because that was annoying having to use those in PvP. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to look into that, but yeah, it's, it makes it a lot easier to like look around and stuff in in um, just exploring PvE. I'll have to maybe try it once in or twice in PvP just to see how it feels, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I recommend giving it a try. Something also uh, I kind of noticed about the camera or the action camera is that it seems like they used the tech from the action camera in this whole like moving with your mouse um, cursor and having the center being it centered on the screen is I think they used this like I believe it was mentioned that the uh, this or the action camera was a pet project someone right mm-hmm, yeah one of the developers I think they used this from the uh, glider system which okay works pretty much identically in terms of how it controls right and I think they used that to use to develop the action camera for the rest of the combat because they feel really really similar. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Which would explain, I guess, I guess it, it probably helped that they had a lot of the stuff already developed. Mm. It just kind of expanded it. Yeah. But it's really good, yeah. Definitely recommend giving it a try. Even yeah. If you're not really someone who plays, who's played the sort of games that have that system, I think it's, it's, it could be, feel very comfortable in a lot of situations. Yeah, and like I said, I definitely enjoy using it just for exploring. I can't fight with it, but, um, it makes exploring easier because you can just keep looking around as you move. Yeah, for so the record, I don't, I don't know if there's a way to just turn it on normally, but the way I found it was using looking through the controls uh, yeah. menu of the options. Yeah, you can set. So you can set. toggle it really easily too. So if you just like set it to a key, you can hit pretty easily. You can just switch between it whether you're exploring or fighting. Yep. What I did so, was yeah. I set it to one of the bracket keys, like you mentioned. You did a Thoros, and then yeah. I I mapped that key to one of my mouse buttons, so I can just click it. And I enter that mode really easily, and then I can just click it to exit and fight regularly if I need to. So it works out really well. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, extra camera is really cool. And uh, also just some some things that I noticed that you should probably know, um, which you might not. It's not super obvious. But one thing to keep in mind is that if you do want to equip your elite specialization, you have to slot the elite specialization trait into the bottom trait slot thing. It will not let you trade it into the middle or the top. So if you want to replace the the trait that's in your middle or your top, you have to um, basically move all your traits up and put the elite specialization in the bottom. It kind of sucks, but I guess the I saw somebody say the reasoning was that that way you can only trade one elite specialization in the future because you know the the plan is that they're eventually going to release more elite specs. And so if they have it set so you can only put Elite Specs in the one slot, then, you know, you can't double up, which makes sense, I guess. But, yeah, yeah I, I thought for a long time... Odd that it's just locked to a certain, like, top, middle, or bottom. That just doesn't make sense. I thought, thought it'd be easier for them to stop you from equipping the two that are, like, tagged as Elite. Yeah, I, don't, I, I thought it was a bit weird, but uh, I, thought, I thought I didn't do it right for a long time. So if you're confused about how to... El- to trade a elite spec, make sure you're trying to put it in the bottom one. That's probably your issue, because I know it was mine. Um, another thing is, if you have the black or white wings backpack skin already, you can get those as glider skins. You have to equip the wings, like have them showing and stuff, and then talk to any of the scouts in Verdant Brink, and then you will unlock the corresponding glider skin. Another thing that it took Athelros to point out to me, which is surprising, I don't know why I didn't look, but for certain glider skins, obviously not the black or white wings or um, 
the special like Heart of Thorns pre-order one because it's supposed to be green because it's Heart of Thorns, you can dye your glider skins in the dye panel. So, you know, keep that in mind. That's a thing. But yeah, I think that's a bit about it for all my little um little things that I noticed. Did you did you notice any other little details that they added? Well, maybe it was just me being slow, but I didn't realize that the elite specs were just like all them in whenever you want. For some reason, I kind of got the impression that they were more permanent than they actually were. Like it was a choice you made, and if you do that, you can't go back on it. I don't know. I guess I'm just dumb. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in most MMOs, when you think of, like, a specialization, it's a permanent choice. So I can see why you'd think that. But yeah, it's definitely, it's more like, it's just a trait line. And if you ever want to not be a chronomancer, you can just untrait for chronomancy, and then you just go back to being a regular mesmer. Which yeah. I think is good. It gives you more flexibility. You, you're not, like, locked into being a uh, yeah. whatever. Because that was the reason why I was kind of hesitant about some of these, is I thought I would, like, change my skills permanently. Like nope. the Reaper one mainly, because that changed your tribe skills. Right, right. Nope, it's just as long as you have that trait line traded. So that's cool, I think. Yeah. Because that way you can try them out if you don't like them, untrade it. But if you do like mm -hmm. it, then, you know, carry on. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, Because, we, we, yeah, we don't want to do too many spoilers, and we haven't got that far in the story anyway. Uh, But, yeah, uh, that's that's about it, I suppose. I hope all of you are having as good a time in Heart of Thorns as we have been, because I know we've been having a pretty good time. And yeah, uh, just just let us know what you think of Heart of Thorns. We'd, we'd love to hear what your experiences are, if we've missed some cool little detail maybe, or, you know, some big feature we've somehow managed to miss. I'm sure that's a thing. But yeah, let us know in the comments on uh, the, the website or something. And we will talk to you next week. We'll probably have more to discuss, and maybe there'll be more news. Who knows? I mean, I feel like they've kind of exerted all the news they could possibly. 